What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. In this video I wanted to talk about several different ways to make materials more realistic within your SketchUp models. So before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to give more in-depth training in SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to get some more start to finish training, um, I cover everything from the basic tools in SketchUp all the way to advanced applications like modeling for interior design, modeling for layout, and an introduction to photorealistic rendering. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So tip one is to set the material size within SketchUp. And so what that means is in order for materials to look realistic within SketchUp, they need to be sized to a real world size. Like for example, this is my default model that I have in SketchUp. And if you were to measure it, it has a height of about six feet. And so basically, what this means is this gives you kind of a scale within your model. Well, if I was to come in and apply a brick material, sometimes when you apply materials, these bricks are a little bit too big or too small, and you can come in and you can adjust them using the edit tab within your materials. So like for example, sometimes you'll bring in materials and their size will be way too small like this, and this doesn't look very realistic because basically you can see that this uh, brick image is tiling over and over again. Well, what you can do is you can come in and you can adjust that size in the material section of your tray under the edit tab. And so I can come in and I can set the width of this to four feet. And you can see how since these are locked, the size of this is gonna adjust as well so that this maintains its proportions. So this is a much more realistic size for my brick. Tip two, you can use the same material and you can set it to different sizes by using Make Unique Texture. If I was to take this and make a copy off to the right, you can see how these both have these brick material applied. Well, sometimes you don't want the brick materials to have exactly the same size or other materials as well. Um, so what you can do is, right now if I was to come in and adjust this, you can see how as I adjust the size, both of these are adjusting and we don't necessarily want that. In this case, let's say that we want this material to be a different size. What you can do is you can right click on a material and you can say make unique texture. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a copy of this texture that's unique from this one. So if I use the eyedropper and I select the first one, or the second one, you can see how they now have two different names. And what that means is those are different kinds of materials within your SketchUp model. If I scroll up to the in model dropdown, you can see how now I have both the brick antique 01 in the brackets and also the brick antique 01 with the underscores. So what that means is now I can come in here and if I was to use the eyedropper to select this tool, to select this material, now I could come in and I could adjust the size of this one independently of the size of this one. So now they're unique materials. So you can use the same texture image and adjust the size differently in different locations. And one other thing to note is not only now that these are unique from each other, can you use the, can you adjust the size? You could also come in and you could position the textures differently as well. And we'll talk about position texture more in a minute but you could basically use this to move this texture around without it affecting the other texture. So sometimes it's not a size issue as much as a placement issue. So tip three is to download higher resolution materials and import them into SketchUp. So right now SketchUp has a bunch of different built-in materials. So like the brick materials and a whole bunch of other materials can be found in these dropdowns. But sometimes you need something that's more high resolution. So these are kind of low resolution images. And while they definitely help your performance because they're not super large files, um, they're also a little bit limited and a little bit low resolution when you're doing things like rendering. What you can do is you can go to a website like www.sketchuptextureclub.com and you can actually download other materials. So in this case, you can create a login, you can go into your materials and you can download a material. So in this case, I could download this copper metal panel material. There's a whole bunch of other materials in here as well. I could just download that file and then once you download that file, you can unzip it 
and it's going to contain an image. So in this case, this one was the 8 underscore copper metal panel texture. So if I double click on it, you can see that this is an image that, that you can then bring into SketchUp. And so in order to do that, all you need to do is go into your SketchUp model and do a file, import, navigate to the folder where that image is located and you're going to want to go down and use the image as texture so click the little button in the middle here for use image as texture and if for whatever reason you can't see your images you may need to adjust the kind of image over here on the right but in this case I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click on this copper panel texture and this is now going to allow me to place this texture by setting a point so in this case I'm just going to single click then I'm going to move this until it's sized to about the size that I want it to be and I'm gonna go ahead and click again and you can see how that brings this into my model and this will now show up in your in model section of your material section of your tray so you can see how right here the copper metal panel is now showing up in here and so what I'm gonna do is you can then come in and you can adjust the size of this just like we did before so I could adjust this to five foot four foot whatever I want to do so you can see how now this is in here as a texture. So tip four is to place your materials within your model using position texture. So you can see how right now when this got brought in, if this was a ceiling or something like that, you can see how this isn't very realistic because all of your panels just kind of cut off at the edge here. So the seams aren't really lined up with anything. And so what you can do is you can come into a texture, you can right click on it, and you can go to the texture option and click position and I'll link to a video with more details on this below but basically you can click position and that's gonna give you this series of little push pins that you can use to move these textures around and so in this case we want this red pin so you're gonna single click on the red pin to select it and then you're gonna move it over to the corner right here so you single click to move the pins and then you click and drag in order to move your image and so in this case you can see that I'm able to line this seam up with this other side however so this still isn't sized quite properly so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the green pin in order to scale this and so I'm gonna move this green pin until it's on this point right here and I'm just gonna click and drag to right there and you can see how basically what this did is this resized this so that it fits within my face. So if I hit the enter key, you can see how now this has been sized to tile properly to fit my face. And obviously there's some limitations, like if these tiles come in a certain dimension, then you're not gonna wanna custom scale this. But um, just visually, this looks a lot better than having tiles that are kinda cut off wherever your face ends, that sort of thing. So tip five is to save your imported textures for use later. So a lot of the time you're gonna do a lot of work to get a texture in that you like, and you're gonna to wanna to reuse it multiple times. And so once you've imported this, like we talked about before, you're gonna go into the materials section of your tray. You can click the drop down and go to in model, and you're gonna find your texture. So in this case, my texture is this copper metal panel. Well, what you can do is you can right click on this and click save as, to save that to your material library for access later. So for example, I could create a new folder. We could call this metal materials. And I could save this as a copper metal panel material. Now what you can do in the future is you can click the little drop down arrow and click open or create a collection. And you can navigate to this folder and click select folder. Well now, within my dropdown, I'm gonna have an option for metal materials and whatever SketchUp material is in that folder is now gonna show up for future use. So now I can take this and I can apply it just like I would any other texture. And one thing to note is when you save this, this saves this as a SketchUp material file. So this is no longer in there as just an image, which is what you downloaded from SketchUp Texture Club. This is now in here as an actual SketchUp material file, which SketchUp, which SketchUp can read and show in your materials section. So you do need to make sure that you're actually saving those as SketchUp materials after you import them. Tip six is when you're looking for new material textures to download, you need to make sure that they're seamless. And so what seamless means 
is that you need to make sure you're downloading material that tiles properly. So let's say for example I was to bring in this wood material which looks like this. So if I was to bring this wood material in and place it and we'll go ahead and make it a little bit smaller so that you can see a little bit better. But basically the way that SketchUp works with materials is it tiles them over and over. But you can see how in this case these don't tile properly, meaning these aren't uninterrupted. So this looks very unrealistic. So no matter what I do with this image, if it's in here and it's tiling over and over again, it's never going to look realistic because of the seams between the images. So what that means is when you're searching for texture materials, you need to search for materials that have the word seamless in them or described as seamless. Because if you use textures that are seamless, like this one, you can see how when these textures repeat, there's not a seam or a line between them so they look more realistic. So tip seven is to use projected materials on complex faces. So for example, if I was to use my brick material and try to apply it to this complex face, you can see that SketchUp has problems trying to map this to this material. So like for example, if you zoom, if you were to triple click in here, you can see all of the hidden geometry and you can see how SketchUp is applying this to each individual piece of hidden geometry as opposed to doing it kind of across the whole thing. And so you get this like warped weird texture image. And what you want to do is you want to set this texture to projected. And so in order to do that, all you're going to do is you're going to draw a flat surface. And I'm going to reverse the face on this. Um, and you're just going to apply this brick material to that flat surface. And then if you were to right click on that flat surface and go to texture, projected, and then use the eyedropper to sample that texture, you can apply that to this face and SketchUp is going to project this material down as opposed to trying to apply it to every tile like it is over here on the left. So you can see how this is much smoother using those projected textures. And if it helps you wrap your mind around this, you could also draw kind of a canvas up above. So you could just draw a rectangle up here and you could apply the material right there and set it as projected up there and then sample that and place it. If that helps you wrap your mind around the way that that works a little bit better. But basically if you set this as a projected texture, then this is going to be smooth. And so, so, and for the next tip, sometimes using textures as projected doesn't work very well. So for example, let's go back to our copper, copper metal panel texture that we brought in. If I was to apply this to the sphere, you can see how you have the same problem where it's kind of applying this to the different faces very haphazardly, um, or really not haphazardly, but just to the kind of hidden flat faces in here that are making up your sphere. Well, projected in this case isn't going to work very well because if I was to take this, I was to apply it to this face, and I was to set it as projected, you're going to get a bunch of warping on the edge because basically what this is doing is this is taking this image and it's projecting it down across this face, which works fine on the front side or the top and the bottom, but you can see how you're getting a bunch of distortion right here. And so there's an extension you can download and I'll link to a video about this in the notes down below. There's an extension you can download called through paint and it's actually included as a part of Fredo tools, which is a set of tools by Fredo six. But basically, if I was to apply this one more time to this last sphere, and then I was to activate through paint, I can actually set this to UV map my material across this face. So all I would have to do is I would just have to come in here and click on this face. And you can select one of these options. There's several different ways that it can try to UV map this. But in this case, we'll select quad mesh. We'll make sure this material is selected and we're just going to click on this. And you can see how basically what this does is this tries to come in here and place this along your faces. And so you can see how in this case the quad mesh isn't working very well. We're going to click on the natural UV and try again. And you can see how that works a lot better, um, at least along these edges. And so you can see how it still isn't perfect, but the texture definitely works along this a lot better. And then you can also use this to resize your material. 
if you want to just by clicking on your face you can move it around you can resize it so this just gives you another option for things that you can do in order to map things onto complex surfaces so leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you using any of these? Are there any tips you would like to see on this list? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.